thank you very much. Um, well, since I'm not supposed to introduce myself, I, I won't. I'm very glad that everyone is here. I'm glad that I'm here. And this is going to be a very short presentation uh, because it's only 20 minutes and it's a complex topic. So I'm going to share my screen and let's see. Can you see now uh, the, the uh, title slide? I'm not uh, sharing the PowerPoint directly, but rather my screen. So on the right side, uh, you can see uh, something else. You can ignore that for now. Okay, so this is about contradictory information on graded reader levels. Which do we believe? And it's a rather complex uh, question. And for many people, it's sort of academic because you really don't have to um, believe all of them. If you're using just one publisher series, they, they are ordered level, starter level, level one, level two, level three, and so forth. And there's no problem. The issue comes when you have books from many press uh, publishers. And the reason I'm showing you this, the five finger rule, is because actually it boils down to this is the best one if you're trying to find a book for your student or your student is trying to find a book for uh, him or herself, uh, just to look at a couple pages and see how many difficult words there are. Um, and that can determine whether it's at the correct reading level. Whether it's interesting or not is another, top, uh, another um, problem. Uh, they can look at the back of the book, they can thumb through it to find an interesting book. But anyway, that will work. Uh, but uh, you need to remember that they need 98% of the, um, you need 98% of the uh, known words for the students to actually be able to use it and enjoy it without a dictionary. Okay, so first let's look at the information you have on most uh, graded reader series. This is um, Pearson's, and you can see here on the back, there's this here, which I've enlarged, and you can see here the Sefer scale. Are, uh, are most of you familiar with the Sefer scale? It goes from A1 or less than A1 here up to C2, with A1 being uh, a beginner and C2 being near native and the number of headwords, and you can see this goes up depending on um, the level. And the headwords is basically the number of unique words um, in the book. And how unique it's defined depends on the publisher. It could be exactly that word. It could be the whole word family. It could be um, many of several other definitions, but at any rate, it slowly goes up. Um, and the number of words on it. And, oh, here's a definition of what a head word is. You can see a lemma uh, is all the related forms that are the same part of speech. So uh, to clear a table would not be considered part of the same lemma. But a word family includes all the words that have that same uh, base word, regardless of what part of speech they are. So they're somewhat different. And again, it depends on the publisher, which one is uh, used, okay? Um, and the levels, here's one uh, frequency level table. Uh, this is um, from uh, Schmidt in 2014 for the British National Corpus. And so they are grouped according to how many are in each level. Now, the problematic issue here is that each publisher has their own list of what the first thousand words are, or if it's a 200 uh, headword book, what those 200 headwords are that you can use, the author can use in that book. Of course, there are always some exceptions to tell the story, but those are usually defined somehow in the book. So students will knew, uh, know them and not need to look them up. Um, in fact, I was uh, talking to, uh, well, by email, Peter Viney recently, and he said for a series he was doing for children, they removed all the academic words from uh, their list because they need words like princess and fairy and things like that um, in their basic words in order to tell the stories that they wanted to. So there's no guarantee that 
um, any specific publisher will use any specific list of words. And even the list of words of a publisher will change from time to time uh, due to changes in the content that they are creating. Um, so it's based on the corpus that the publisher creates. And for some reason, it has the mind of its own here. Um, and so extra words are gloss. I covered all that. Let's go on. So here, this is from uh, Paul Goldberg. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, that shows where the publisher's stated level varies. So here are the headwords across the top. And you can see, for example, here are the level ones. And for each publisher, the number of headwords for level one can be quite different. And for example, Compass was here, but they have several series. So maybe another series has a different range for level one, level two, or level three. So this means that you can't, as a teacher, say, well, my students are reading level one books now. It doesn't work. Okay, so you have to have some other system. And the question is, what other system do you want to use? There are some at the bottom here, the ERF levels, which is also uh, used uh, numerically rather than with these names um, for uh, uh, X reading. The EPER levels is a very old one and why it starts with G and goes to A for the most difficult when it turned out A really wasn't the most difficult and they had to create an X above it. This is the uh, Edinburgh Project in Extensive Reading. Here are the CAF or CEFR levels again and the Yomiyasasa levels, which are um, a Japanese system. And this one is not one that was done uh, Analytically, it was done by teachers guessing or estimating how difficult they thought it was related to other books that they already knew, knew the difficulty of. And it's actually an average of many uh, teachers' um, uh, levels. And it turns out to be the one that correlates most highly with the actual student ability. But it's based on Japanese, of course, Japanese uh, readers. So uh, each publisher maintains its own list of headwords and they can be, there can be considerable variation and they aren't strict. Some authors write according to their own feel of, of what is appropriate rather than um, just a strict head a headword list. And it's not just vocabulary, but difference in permitted grammatical structures for each level. But again, some uh, publishers are strict no, you cannot use past tense in the starter level, where other ones, it's whatever the uh, author feels is suitable for the target level that he's uh, writing for. So these other factors are difficult to quant uh, quantify, but they also make a difference in how difficult a book is, and you can't measure it by headwords, the number and quality of the illustrations, how the words outside the approved list of headwords are actually gloss. The average length of the sentences, longer words take more uh, processing and students are reading slowly will forget the beginning of the sentence by the time they get to the end. The absence of activities, these are uh, useful for intensive reading. I'm trying to say here that no activities with just a straight read is actually better than one that's broken up with activities but publishers tend to uh, put activities between chapters because they want to sell more books. And a lot of teachers want to use them for intensive reading or for class readers. So then they want those activities there. Um, multiple titles in a series makes it easier because if the same characters recur over and over again in the same vocabulary, that makes it easier to understand. I read about 35 mystery novels in Japanese. By, by the same author because um, it made it much easier to uh, read. The total word length, the longer the book, the more difficult it is. Again, it's a memory issue. The student interest in the topic, of course, and the available background no. knowledge of the students no, makes a difference. And somebody needs to turn their microphone off, please. Uh, would you uh, take care of that, please? Um, or I will, hmm. I'm not sure who it is. Okay, 
Next slide. So here are three, four books of Tom Sawyer and they're at different head words. So if you look at the head words, oh, the person one is the most difficult. And uh, the black life, uh, black cat life skills one is the most, uh, no, the Macmillan one is the most difficult. Number of head words, uh, the black cat one. The suffer level, um, well, three of them all say A1, although the Oxford bookworm says, uh, both A1 and A2. The Omiyasasa level, uh, clearly Pearson, and I've already defined that. And this is the um, M reader level, and M reader is this site that you see over here, um, which I run. And um, that is one choice for equating them, but it's not, again, ideal but it works. And maybe right here, I should mention that it isn't so important that say we have 10 levels uh, in uh, the, read, uh, the M reader scale. It's not so important that the student reads a level two book if they're at level two. If it's a level three book, there's so much fluctuation because of all these factors I mentioned that the student might be able to handle it. The important thing is, uh, can the student read it fluently? Are there, um, in a uh, few difficult words in it, and are they interested in it? So it's not so crucial that it's at a specific level. But of course, if a student is basically at a level two, you don't want them to read a level five book. There, there clearly is a difference that would um, affect how well they could comprehend it. They couldn't do extensive reading with it. It would be intensive reading. And so, here are this, uh, the levels of them, only this one is um, stage two. This says beginner, and this says level one. The, I've gone over this already without the highlighting. So uh, you can see here that this one here is reading level two, this is reading level five. So M reader has classified this as the most difficult one. So here is a table and you can see the head words across the top and some of the publishers or publisher series here. And the ones that are the same color are the same suffer rating, supposedly. And the numbers inside are that um, publisher's level. So this is easy starts, level one, level two, level three. So you can see that for Pearson, level two and level three are all in the A2 level. But you can also see that there's considerable variation, which is the problem with having contradictory information. And another issue you can see is with these arrows here. If you were just using Pearson books, there's a huge jump between level two and level three from 600 headwords to 1200 headwords. So do you really think your students can manage that jump? And usually the answer is no, which means that it's difficult to use just one publisher series. You need to find other series, of course, that are interesting to the students, but hit these areas where that publisher doesn't have um, suitable books. So you'd really need to have a collection of multiple publishers, of course, of multiple uh, uh, titles, genres, and so forth. And then to go on, here's another one. And here are the approximate TOEFL IPT levels for them. And here is the Japanese Yomiyasasa levels, which I've used to equate them. And here, this, here are the publishers levels, level one, level two, level three. So the meanings are different than the one up here, but the main point we can get here is that they're all over the place again. Okay, look at the level six, page turn level six. Of course, uh, that's not fair. This is a 12 level series. Um, so, but the other ones you can see, they do vary quite a bit, although they cluster like all the level threes are in this area here, but it's difficult to trust um, any specific uh, system because there is so much variation in them. 
Now, this is one way to determine it. This is our uh, one for the uh, M reader series, which we use. And you can see though that for the Sefer A1 level, we have three levels because the Sefer levels have only six levels. So um, A1 is too broad. A student who can read a level one book that is rated A1 might have extreme difficulty with one that's level three, but still rated A1. So the Sefer levels themselves are not a sufficient indicator of the difficulty. And uh, this is just for reference. Uh, these are not uh, exact. And here is the ERF scale. And you can see here beginner elementary, beginner uh, medium, beginner high elementary level, which is a broad category and so forth. The Lexiles is a big problem. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. And here are the Omiyasasa levels. Now, for the Kyoto levels, we basically use the Omiyasasa levels based, uh, but then tempered by our own judgment looking at the books. And here are the X reading ones, which correlate with the ERF scale ones here. And so with the Lexile scales, if you find a book that is rated 275, which does it go in? Because the Lexile scales are not accurate for um, ESL or um, second language learners. It's a scale made for native speakers and takes into effect factors which are irrelevant for ours. And then as you saw accidentally here, for one that's uh, Lexile 480, it covers all of these levels. And so you can't really pinpoint what level a book is looking at the Lexile level. Although I've seen people who naively have used Lexile levels for their own research. And this I think is my final slide. And this is from uh, Metro Metro Metametrics, which uh, created the Lexile levels. And you can see here that this report, their own report, the text complexity of what one publisher levels as A1, 650, is just as difficult as what another publisher labels as C1, 630. So they themselves uh, realize that the publishers and their uh, own system uh, don't match. And we need more uh, research on how well the Lexile levels match. But basically, the answer is they don't. So again, Going back to the five finger rule, I think uh, teachers need to make sure that students understand how to evaluate a book before they borrow it. And this is probably the best way. If it, the, your purpose is for students to borrow a book, if you're trying to categorize the books for the library bookshelf and you have to put them into levels, then uh, you're on your own. Um, I personally recommend um, the M Reader uh, system, which you can find um, at m, well, mreader.org. Hold on. I think I have that here. And if you go to about M Reader, the Kyoto scale, you can find that same table as well as um, how we have categorized books for extensive, re for graded readers. And these are youth readers of which we have quite a few as well. And that's all I had. And I still managed to do it in my 20 minutes despite uh, starting a little late. Um, so um, I think it's question and answer time. So um, we do have some time here or should we go to the breakout room? Uh, okay, uh, um, thank you, Tom. Um, Yes, um, probably you only have a couple of minutes if you want to stay here. So you can, of course, uh, go to the breakout room. And people who want to talk to Tom directly mm -hmm. can follow him, get him there. <laughs> okay. Well, follow me over to the breakout room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Grab him while he's there. Okay, and yeah, but be, be, before that, can we just give you um, a, a pro applause for your informative presentation? Thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'm enjoying. 20 minutes, it was great. <laughs>
Yeah, it was very dense. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to the breakout room as soon as I find it. Oh, there's such a huge list here. Uh, 